Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. For the last couple of years, we've been following in the footsteps of Herbert Evans, who wrote this wonderful book, Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, in 1905. Today, you find Ross, Widget, Gizmo and me in a little village called Shutford. Those of you who watch us regularly will know that for the last few weeks we've been in this area around Banbury where this ironstone is the building material, making everything slightly redder than we're used to. It's beautiful and it's extremely strongly illustrated in this tiny village of Shut Shutford. As you enter the village of Shutford, but what strikes you first and foremost is the collection of obviously ancient buildings on the steep slope of the hill which create a roofscape perhaps more expected in Europe than in England. The buildings include the church, the manor house and the pub all on different levels creating the impression of a sort of medieval skyscraper in much the same way as the coastal villages of for example Liguria rise from the sea. Roofscapes are always interesting, and the Cotswold stone roof tiles, while they haven't been replaced by slates or were still red tiles, give the buildings a natural look that somehow links them to the ground from which they spring. Initial impressions are encouraging in this little village. Then you notice that the pub is no longer open for business. A bad sign in a community like this. It's particularly bad if the pub is physically right in the middle of the village and forms such a critical part of its architectural integrity. I had read that the village had a difficult time in the 1970s. Lots of empty and derelict cottages, businesses that had ceased to trade, and a community in trouble. But since that time, huge efforts have been made to improve Shutford. And certainly, by the turn of the millennium, the village was on the up. The pub was integral to this effort, and it had a reputation, at least, as a centre for the community. I wonder what's happened. This village has an unusual past. The manor house was built by the Fines family in about 1585, although they never seem to have lived in it. Which is perhaps not surprising, as Sir Richard Fines was, at the same time, doing considerable work on Broughton Castle, a few miles away, to bring it up to modern standards. There are stories that Sir Richard secretly drilled and trained his parliamentary soldiers in the top floor of Shutford Manor, which at that time was a single room of vast proportions. But again, the same stories are told of the castle, so of course it's possible that only one such story is true. We know that in July 1980, the manor celebrated its 400th anniversary when its American owners threw a party for the whole village, including an Elizabethan banquet, music and a generous supply of local beer. These days it's a little difficult to see the manor, which in an age of mass tourism is not really surprising, but its gardens are obviously well kept and much loved. I'm not sure I can quite say the same thing about the village as a whole. There is such a difficult balance to be achieved in villages like this between over-grooming to create a sort of chocolate box picturesque result and an unkempt look that suggests lack of love and commitment. I get a sneaking feeling that this village is on the verge of tipping into the latter, although the fate of the pub could turn out to be critical in avoiding this happening. Certainly, Shutford has centuries of experience of coming back from the brink. At one stage, for at least 200 years, up until 1948, the village was the world's leading producer of plush, a specialist weave of silk, wool and cotton used, amongst many other things, to line coaches. Their work can still be seen in some of the fleet of royal coaches. There is little or no sign of this world-beating industry left in the village to tell the story. The church is a simple and pretty 12th century church, largely rebuilt in the 14th and 15th centuries. 
the unusual position of the tower in the west end of the north aisle adds to the complicated roofscape outside. The 13th century chancel arch is pretty, the Norman font, octagonal with blind arches in each face, its tall pews with poppy heads, and good commandment boards from about the same time on the walls, its matching pulpit and screen from about 1898 are all pleasant to the eye, but perhaps because they are between incumbents at the moment, which is a situation likely to remain for quite a long time given the recruitment processes in the Church of England, the whole is looking just a little bit unloved, rather like the rest of the village. Having said all of that, though, I must underline that the village remains an attractive place to visit in passing without too great an expectation, but with hope that the community rallies round and stops any sign of decline in its tracks. I hope you've enjoyed our little trip round Shutford. It is extraordinary, really. We've noticed that this part of the world is very busy on the roads, and so the atmosphere is slightly different to what we're used to, but it is remarkable, and we've enjoyed our trip around the villages in this part of the world. We've got a few more to go. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, it really helps, and press the little bell motif, because that way we'll always let you know when we produce new stuff. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram, at the Cotswold Explorer, and visit our website where you'll find all the stuff that we've done in the past, thecotswoldexplorer.co.uk. We will see you very soon somewhere else in the Cotswolds.